Hey there, welcome to DIY Projects with Pete. Today we're going to walk through the process of building a concrete table with a slab of walnut in the center. It's got a lower walnut shelf and a steel base. If you enjoy this video and find it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Let's get started. The first step is to find a cool piece of wood, and Andrew from Montana Reclaim Lumber helped me find a really neat piece of Claro walnut that I'll be using for today's project. I cut the board down in length, and then used a hand planer to get a quick idea of what the wood looks like. I started out with a slab about 2 inches thick, and with a live edge on the side. The other side was straight, so I took a scrap piece of wood with a live edge and traced the side to try and get a natural looking edge on that second side. I used a jigsaw to cut the curves on the side opposite the live edge. Next I ran the board through a bench planer to smooth it out. The board had a slight twist to it, which the bench planer helped quite a bit with, and I planed the board down to one and a half inches in thickness. I then cut a little more length off since I decided to do a bit shorter coffee table than originally planned, and then ran it through the planer which will plane boards up to 13 inches wide. After a quick sanding, we'll start building the mold. I had a piece of melamine I was able to recycle from the last concrete project, so I used a razor blade to remove that old silicone, and then double checked the thickness of the slab so I knew the width to cut the sidewalls of the mold. Since the slab is one and a half inches, I'll cut the melamine strips to two and a quarter inches in width to accommodate for the three quarter inch thick base piece of the mold. Lay out the slab and determine placement. Start by cutting one end straight to line up with one end of the mold. The end of the board should be flush with the base piece. I made sure the board was relatively centered and then traced along each side so I'll be able to put it back in the same spot in a later step. The base of the mold can be used as a straight edge so we can cut that second end nice and flush. Clamp the slab down and then make the cut with a miter saw or a circular saw. Place the side strips around the base of the mold. The two longer side strips will overlap the ends of the shorter side strips. Cut the boards on a miter saw. Attach the side strips one at a time. I typically use 1 and 5 8 inch long drywall screws. Always pre-drill prior to inserting the screw. And make sure to press down firmly on the base of the mold and on the side strip to help ensure the two pieces are flush against the work surface. Continue attaching each of the side walls. For this size of table, I typically use screws about every 6 to 8 inches, and for really large projects, you can always secure wood blocks to the work surface outside the side walls to prevent them from ever bowing from the weight of the concrete, but it wasn't necessary for this sized piece. Check that the slab fits in the mold. Next, I used a water-based spray sealer to help protect the wood somewhat during the concrete pouring process. Keep in mind, this project is a big experiment since I haven't embedded this large a slab in concrete before, so I did learn a lot from this project, and there are definitely some things I do differently the next time. I felt sort of like the crash test dummy with this, hoping to make the mistakes so you don't have to. To help tie the concrete to the wood, I pre-drilled and then inserted 3 8 inch diameter 10 inch long leg bolts into the side of the slab. An impact wrench with a socket attachment works really well for getting the bolt a few inches into the slab. Do your best to insert them as level as possible, and space each bolt about 6 to 8 inches apart from each other. Then repeat the process on the other edge of the slab. If the slab was thicker, I'd have used wider leg bolts, or even drilled a hole all the way through the slab, and then inserted a long piece of 3 8 inch rebar for each hole. Use rubbing alcohol and a paper towel or rag to clean the mold prior to sealing the seams with silicone. Then use masking tape along the sides of each seam to make the caulking process go easily. Simply place the tape about 1 8 of an inch or so on each side of the seam. Start by placing the tape around the edges of the base of the mold first. Then tape about an eighth of an inch over the seam where the sidewall meets the top of the base piece. At each corner, leave a gap at the seam as well. A razor blade works really well for cutting the tape. Use 100% silicone to create a bead along each seam. Once you've gone around each side, use your index finger to round over the bead. Have plenty of paper towels around to clean off your hands and for extra silicone. The point of the blue tape is to make it easy to get a nice clean and rounded bead of silicone without getting any excess on the mold. Now once all the edges are rounded, slowly remove the tape before the silicone cures. This will give you a cleaner bead of silicone. And in addition to the silicone sealing the mold, it's going to give the top edges of the concrete a good looking and beveled finish. 
I used silicone to secure the slab to the base of the mold. This keeps it in place, but it will release from the base of the mold without a problem. I'd recommend using a bit more than I did. Allow the silicone plenty of time to dry before pouring the concrete. Next, prepare the reinforcement. Wire mesh, hog wire mesh, or 3 8 inch rebar are all good materials that could be used to help strengthen the table. And the size of your table will definitely help determine what you'll want to use. Something else I like to do is double check that the corners and sidewalls are all square, and then to tie the sidewalls to each other for additional strength. Give the mold a final wipe down before the concrete pour, then begin the concrete mixing process. For this project, I used close to three bags of Quick Creek countertop mix and added a little charcoal coloring to color the concrete. Make sure to mix the concrete to about an oatmeal-like consistency so it will flow into each of the corners and under and between the reinforcement. Transfer the concrete from the mixing tub with a bucket, and uh, preferably with a bucket that is in better shape than the one I apparently had lying around that was on its last leg. And remember to vibrate the concrete a few times during the pour to minimize air bubbles and voids in the finished surface of the concrete. I tied the reinforcement to each leg bolt with metal wire and did my best to center the reinforcement in the middle of the concrete. You will need to work with the mesh a bit to get it to lie flat. And like I said, this is somewhat of an experiment tying this size of a wood slab into a concrete project. But I've been asked how to do a similar project many times and couldn't find a video explaining the process, so I figured it'd be worth a shot. The reinforcement worked well for a smaller scale project, but if you have a thicker and or a larger project, I'd incorporate some rebar. And if you are a concrete reinforcement guru and have some tips for all of us, please share below. Just to be sure the slab didn't move around while vibrating the concrete toward the end of the pouring process, I temporarily attached a few boards to help hold the walnut in place. Vibrate the concrete by shaking the work surface and by tapping the sides with a rubber mallet or a tool of your choice. Once the pouring process was complete, I removed the boards, screeded the concrete a bit to level it, and did a quick troweling to give the underside a flat surface. I let the concrete continue to set up and came back to trowel it and clean things up before covering it with some plastic to help the concrete cure evenly. I let the concrete cure for about four days before removing it from the mold. Remove all the screws and then slowly pry each sidewall away to reveal each side of your concrete table. Remember to pry between the wood and never against the concrete. Here's a glimpse of the concrete after removing the sidewall. There weren't many air bubbles or voids, which is a good thing. And even after working with the slab, it did have an ever so slight twist, which left a very slight gap on one of the ends between the slab and the base of the mold, which you can see here. We'll simply use the wet polisher to polish the concrete near the wood to level things out in a later step. Use a sanding block to smooth over the rough edges. Always work from the corner in and not into the corner to prevent from blowing out a corner. Do a quick sanding over the wood and use an old chisel if necessary to clean up other areas. Before flipping the concrete, we'll space some 2x4s evenly on the work surface. This will allow air to flow around all sides of the concrete. And my buddy Rick was up visiting for a fly fishing trip, so he helped out with some of the heavy lifting. Place a rag under the edge while flipping it, and when lowering, do your best to slowly bring it down while supporting the piece with your hands. Once down, pull the melamine away to get your first look at the top side of your table. It's still going to be a diamond in the rough until the polishing and sanding is complete. I did a quick sanding on the wood and then let the concrete cure about one more day before doing any wet polishing. In the meantime, I started to build a metal base for the tabletop. I picked up some two and a half inch square tubing at our local steel mill. They cut it into 10 foot segments that would fit into my pickup. Once back to the shop, I started making my cuts using a metal cutoff saw. After cutting, do a little grinding on the ends and then lay out the pieces on a flat surface. I used a square to ensure everything was at a 90 degree angle and then tacked each of the segments together before doing a complete weld. Now I just have a basic flux core welder that I can plug into any normal plug-in and it's worked pretty well. I'm not a great welder by any means, but it's certainly a fun skill and useful skill to learn for building table bases and for fixing things around the shop. After tack welding each spot, I came back later and did a full weld. I also added angle iron and some flat bar to support a lower shelf and some one and a half inch square tubing up top to support a piece of plywood, which will help distribute the weight of the concrete top. Now, the welds aren't the prettiest, especially using a flux core welder, but after grinding away the slag, everything looked pretty dang good and the table base was super solid. I sprayed on a gunmetal blue patina to help blend in the areas that were grinded and then used a metal sealer to protect and seal the table base. The sealer is going to darken up the metal just a little bit and I did wipe down the metal prior to applying the sealer with some degreaser. 
A lower shelf for books and magazines is always nice, so I picked up some walnut and started the process to make a lower shelf. Cut the boards down in length on a miter saw and then even out the width on a table saw. A biscuit joiner is a great way to connect the boards. You basically create a half moon shaped incision into the side of each piece of wood you'd like to join. Then add some glue, put a biscuit in, and clamp the boards together. Once the glue dries, go ahead and sand the entire piece. Then apply a finish of your choice. I used a Danish oil that was already lying around the shop. Beautiful day. Absolutely. Have Take care. Nice Thank you, you too. I did a few coats of the Danish oil and then slid the shelf into place. The next day I wheeled the concrete outside and started the finish work. First, I did a quick polishing on the underside with 200 and then 400 grit pads. It's not 100% necessary to polish the bottom side, but I do like to have somewhat of a smooth finish. Once the bottom side is complete, flip the concrete right side up and begin polishing. I used an 800 grit pad to polish the majority of the top since I didn't want to expose the aggregate. And if you do want the sand and gravel to be exposed, I'd recommend starting out with a 400 or 200 grit pad. Since the slab did have the slight twist and didn't rest perfectly flat in the mold, I used a 200 grit pad to grind down next to the slab and make it flush with the wood. Exposing the rocks looks pretty cool next to the wood. After using that 200 grit pad next to the slab, I worked up through the other grits using 400 and then 800 for the highest grit pad. Some aggregate popped out next to the slab, so I filled in the area with a sand and cement slurry mixture. Use a similar slurry to fill in other voids if needed, and then let it cure for at least a few hours before coming back to polish. That final polish is going to give the concrete a smooth and a finished look. Let the concrete and wood dry out completely, and then use an orbital sander with 120 and then 220 grit sandpaper on the wood. I applied Danish oil to the slab and would recommend at least a few coats. Pay special attention to only get the sealer on the wood. It's going to make those natural colors of the wood pop and look really beautiful. Next, we'll seal the concrete. I like to dilute and do about five to six thin coats. I typically dilute the sealer a little less for each coat and the last coat can go on close to full strength. If you have any questions on sealers or want to see other ideas for concrete tables, check out my concrete project playlist on YouTube, which I'll link to in the description. Applying the sealer with a microfiber rake works well in my experience, and I do recommend doing one to two full strength coats of sealer on the bottom of the concrete as well. I cut a piece of three quarter inch thick plywood to insert into the base and then test fit the concrete top. I'd recommend using 100% silicone to attach the concrete top to the plywood. This will hold it in place and the metal around the plywood will prevent the top from shifting. Lastly, move the table into your home, kick your feet up, and enjoy that new coffee table. I hope this video inspires you to get out in your workspace and to create. Please subscribe and give the video a thumbs up if you found it helpful, and check out some of the other videos on the channel. Comment below to say hi, and let me know if you have ideas for projects you'd like to see in upcoming videos. Best of luck with all your projects, and cheers from Montana.